With World War II underway in 1939, the United States Army Air Corps began fielding reports from Germany and Britain about a major advancement in aviation technology. The German Hinkle HE-178 and the British Gloucester E-2839 were demonstrating that, quote, aircraft flying without propellers could be the future of air combat. In response, the United States launched its own top-secret fighter program hidden behind the development of the rear propeller-driven Bell XP-52 and XP-59 prototypes. The resulting Bell 59 era comet would be the very first American fighter jet. Jet Power The development of the turbojet began in Britain far before it was considered a viable and powerful addition to military aircraft. Frank Whittle, a Royal Air Force officer, filed a patent for the invention in 1930. Yet his conviction that the engine type was the future of aircraft was not widely shared. His design went by unnoticed and ignored, until some colleagues funded the development of his engine in 1936. At around the same time, German engineers were working on their own turbojet, which resulted in the first jet-powered aircraft to fly, the Hinkle HE-178. It made its maiden flight in 1939. The British would not fly a jet-powered aircraft until May of 1941. Previous to the commencement of the British project, the United States military authorities dismissed the technology, mistakenly believing it was merely a sci-fi fantasy. In April of 1941, Major General Henry H. Hap Arnold attended the demonstration for the Gloucester E-28 in the United Kingdom. During his visit, he became aware of the British jet program. During the Tizard mission the previous year, a British delegation traveled to the US and mentioned the jet program. However, the subject was not spoken about at length. Arnold requested and received the plans for the aircraft's power plant and went back to the United States with them. A demonstrator of the British Whittle W-1X turbojet engine was also sent to America in October of that year, inside the bomb bay of a B-24 Liberator. The British had also sent the plans for the W-2B-23 engine and a team of engineers from power jets. Major General Arnold knew that an American version had to be produced. On September 4th, he extended an invitation to General Electric, asking for an American version of the engine, to which they agreed. The following day, he reached out to the Bell Aircraft Corporation in Buffalo, New York, to work on this secret project, then labeled MX-397. Lawrence Dale Bell, the head of the corporation, accepted the request and started working on three prototypes. At the time, the project was kept under extreme secrecy. Only a few members of the company knew about it. To get away with the construction of the first American fighter jet, the parties involved launched a disinformation campaign. As part of it, the United States Army Air Forces named the project P-59A, suggesting it was an extension of the separate Bell XP-59 fighter project, which had already been cancelled. Almost every element of the project was mislabeled to confuse German and Japanese spies should they get a hold of any information. General Electric continuously talked about the engine it was working on as a spare part. The design for the fighter jet was completed on January 9th, 1942. Construction began immediately, and the three prototypes were built by March. The XP-59A Lawrence Dale Bell, also known as Larry Bell, hated flying, despite being an aviation executive. He assigned management of the project to his chief test pilot, Robert M. Stanley. Despite Stanley's reticence to take over executive duties, he led the project for the company, and the first prototype was shipped to a test site few had ever heard of before. Moroc Army Airfield was rarely used, hidden between the San Bernardino Mountain and the Shadow Mountain in California. The name of the field was a reversal of the name Corum, the last name of the two brothers that initially lived in the area. The site was remote enough to keep the progress of the project in absolute secret, and additionally facilitated takeoff and landing due to the dry, hard surface of the Lost Rogers Lake. Engineers, technicians, and mechanics were sent to Los Angeles in 1942, unaware that their transfer was going to place them in the remoteness of the California desert. The first XP-59A to arrive got to the airfield on September 12, 1942. It was sent to California by train and took seven days to arrive at Moroc. The aircraft was given a dummy propeller once it was being prepared to invalidate any reconnaissance work by spies. Today, the remote airfield is known as Edwards Air Force Base and is no longer considered a distant, unknown place. The base serves as a home for the Air Force Material Command, which uses it to research and develop new flying technologies and aerospace systems. It also houses the Air Force Test Center, NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center, and the Air Force Test Pilot School. Test Flights The aircraft saw its very first high-speed taxi test on October 1st. Bell Aircraft Test Pilot and Project Manager Robert M. Stanley was at the controls for the taxi tests. 
the first actual flight was conducted by Colonel Lawrence Craigie the following day. The test flight was successful, and the project seemed promising, but the taste of victory would not be long-lasting. The prototypes and first production models of the Era Comet had open-air flight observer stations, like those in biplanes, that were later on cut into the nose of the aircraft. As the months went by, the three AP-59 Era Comets started showing multiple and challenging shortcomings. The engine had an inadequate input response and was unreliable. In the roll axis, the lateral stability turned out to be insufficient, performing far lower than expected. Famous test pilot Charles Elwood Yeager, who would later become the first pilot to exceed the speed of sound in level flight, flew one of the prototypes and was impressed by the smoothness of its flight. Still, he reportedly stated his disappointment in its speed. Regardless of the underperformance of the fighter jets and the problems that kept coming up, the United States Army Air Forces ordered 80 production models of the P-59A Era Comet. The next version of the plane came in 13 service test YP-59As, which boasted a more powerful engine than the prototypes, the General Electric J-31. Although the J-31 would become the very first jet engine to be mass-produced in America, its improvement to the first fighter jet was far less than expected. The top speed only went up by 5 miles per hour. On the other hand, their lifespan before an overhaul was shorter. Since the aircraft did not have a propeller at the nose, the armament was placed there for direct shooting. Before that, most aircraft had the guns at the wings and had to position themselves to shoot. The Era Comet was armed with three Browning M2 .5 caliber machine guns and an M10 37mm cannon. The heavy armament and improved positioning of the weapons made the YP-59A a superiorly armed aircraft. Unfortunately, early tests also proved that the jet was an unstable shooting platform, almost negating the progress made. Robert M. Stanley allegedly stated that the aircraft would shake in its entirety when the machine gun trigger was pulled. The third YP-59A was exchanged for a British first production model Gloucester Meteor, the Britain's first jet fighter, and the only aircraft of its type to enter combat operations on behalf of the Allies in World War II. The Royal Air Force found the American aircraft deficient. Pilots reported that it had somewhat unfavorable performance when compared to the jets they had already been using. In fact, the Aerocom had also performed worse than the propeller North American P-51 Mustang, a fighter and bomber. Two of these Aerocomets were also sent to the U.S. Navy for evaluation under the disguised name YFL-2-1. The Navy found them to be useless for carrier operations soon after. By the end of the testing period, no photos of the aircraft had been released to the public. The Pentagon was still keeping the details of their project a secret. A little flimsy, a little fragile. Despite ongoing issues and difficulties, Bell Aircraft completed 50 of the ordered 80 Aerocomets. 20 of these were under the P-59A designation and 30 under the upgraded P-59B. The delivery of the A models arrived in the fall of 1944. These versions were armed with 44 rounds for the M4 cannon and 200 rounds for each of the three machine guns. The B models of the aircraft were sent to the 412th Fighter Group, so the Army Air Force's pilots could learn the handling and performance of jet fighters. One of the first line military pilots from the 412th Fighter Group to test the Aerocomet was Captain Eugene A. Wink, who stated that, quote, the Aerocomet seemed a little flimsy, a little fragile. Still, he noted the aircraft could turn quickly. The programs for the Aerocomet and for the Lockheed P-80 which performed better and would actually become the first fighter jet to be used operationally by America, were built and paid for under a black program. This meant that their budget was not outlined in traditional documents and that only select members of Congress knew about them. The project was hidden from the public until the end of 1944. When the era comets were transported by ground, they would be fitted with a fake propeller and the whole thing would be covered. This way they could avoid any reports about the new engine type. The 412th Fighter Group was sent to Morocco Airfield along with its new fighter aircraft in June of 1945 in preparation for participation in World War II. This never became a reality as the war ended only weeks later. The group was then sent to March Field, also in California. By the time of the transfer, the United States Army Air Force had accepted that the deficient aircraft could not serve as an operational fighter. Since the Lockheed P-80 was already flying and outperforming the Aerocom on almost every front, it was decided to acquire those planes instead. By 1950, none of the original Bell 59 Era Comet fighters were airworthy. All of them were slowly disposed of, sent to be displayed, used in military training, or as static targets. Although the plane had been a considerable failure, it did open the door and grant the Air Force's experience to keep working on jet-powered aircraft. Surviving Airframes Today, only six P-59s survive. They are all that's left of America's first fighter jet. One is under restoration, so that it's in flying condition using General Electric J-31 engines at the Plains of Fame Museum in Chino, California. 
The other five are displayed around the United States. One of them stayed at what would become Edwards Air Force Base. One was sent to Pioneer Village in Nebraska, another to the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. Another was sent to the March Air Reserve Base in California, and the last one went to the National Air and Space Museum in the nation's capital. While none of the aircraft were ever used in combat, the Bell 59 Aerocomet paved the way for new generations of fighter jets.